Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brain Bean here again. Now, today we're doing another chair review, and I know I've done quite a few of these on the channel, but most of the chairs that I've reviewed have come in anywhere between $250 to $400, and I realize that that can be pretty expensive, and so I wanted to do another chair review that's going to be a little bit more budget-friendly, one to compare how it really falls into place compared to some of those more high-end chairs, and also just to see if you really can get a pretty good gaming chair for under 200 bucks. So today we're taking a look at the Deer Hunter gaming chairs. Now these can be had on Amazon anywhere from 170 to 180 bucks depending on the color and style that you choose. So let's go ahead and just take a look at this thing and we can see if it's worth the money or maybe you should really save up your cash and go for one of the more higher end chairs that's out on the market. So starting as always with construction and design, the chair itself is kind of your standard racing style gaming chair at first glance. It's got some pretty nice aggressive styling as far as the lines in the chair. It's not just kind of a flat panel. It's got the little stitching accents here with like this little triangle pattern. Also got some nice colored accents as well. You know, one thing I would like to see that you do find on more higher end model chairs is that a lot of times the stitching in the chair will actually reflect the colored accents on the leatherette that they have here. Um, and that's not really the case in this one, but it really it's a minor detail. It's not a huge deal or a deal breaker or anything like that. It is wrapped in a pleather material. It is spill resistant and it does feel pretty soft to the touch. Uh, and you can see as far as branding goes on this chair, you do have the single Deer Hunter logo stitched into the top. Uh, and then when you flip the chair around to the back side, you don't have any branding or anything like that there. Um, and you'll also, as we'll look at here in a minute when we get to the actual pillows, there is some branding stitched into the pillows as well. Uh, but as far as a lot of gaming chairs go, this is actually one that is the least branding heavy that I've seen. A lot of times those logos can be really intrusive. And if you're streaming or you know you just have a nice aesthetic look to your setup, sometimes having all those logos can really sort of get in the way and look kind of tacky. So that is one thing I'm gonna give them a point for here on this chair is just that a lot of that over styling isn't really present. And while aesthetics is great and typically we see now with computers, it's not like the old days where you had just LED fans and lights that were only offered in say red or green or blue. With RGB being as big as it is now, you find setups with all different kind of color accents. And so one of the great things about the Deer Hunter chairs that I did like is that they're offered in a ton of different colors and even some two-tone designs. And at this price point, that's really not something you find very often. And even some of the higher end chairs really aren't offered in a bunch of different color styles. So that's another thing that Deer Hunter has going for them. But aesthetics is great and everything, but it needs to be comfortable to sit in. And as I sit in the chair, I can tell you that it is a fairly comfortable chair. And compared to even some of the $250 range chairs that I've reviewed, it feels about the same. I would say the cushion as I'm sitting on it here underneath me in the actual seat, it does feel like it could use a little bit more cushion. You know, I would say for about three to four hours of gaming at a time, it's probably not gonna be that bad. But for anyone that really marathons their games, I could see that being something where you would probably end up throwing a pillow underneath or something like that just to kind of give you a little bit more softer cushion. Uh, the backrest on the chair though is actually pretty nice and I do like it when these types of chairs sort of hug you into the seat a little bit. And as the wings kind of come off to its side here, they do kind of support my shoulders nicely. And the wings of the chair here, while they are a little bit narrow, they are pretty comfortable. And that's another thing about this chair too is that it is sort of a smaller chair and so I wouldn't really recommend it for anybody more than say 6'1 and 250 pounds or so. I think you probably want to move up to a little bit bigger chair because this one's definitely not really made to accommodate sort of a wider frame. It is a pretty narrow chair so that's something to keep in mind as well. Now another test that I've developed sort of over reviewing a bunch of different gaming chairs is a test to basically see if the cushion is thick enough to prevent you from feeling the frame underneath the chair because you do kind of run into that issue with some of the more inexpensive chairs. Now, I can tell you in this chair, just in squeezing the frame around, you can easily feel where that steel frame inside the chair is. But the one test that I always do with these chairs is to just put my knee into it and just put all my weight on it and see if I can feel the metal bars underneath the seat. And with this chair, by putting my knee into it, it goes straight down through and I can immediately feel 
the metal underneath. Now, of course, when you're sitting on it, that's not really going to be the case, but it is a good way to measure kind of how thick and supportive the padding is. Now, towards the back of the chair here, it definitely feels like there's barely any padding, maybe an inch or so. And as you get farther out, it does get a little bit thicker. So at least your legs do feel like, you know, they are gonna be supportive. You're not gonna be cutting off circulation or anything like that, but kind of farther back where your butt's gonna be sitting, I could definitely see, like I said before, getting a little bit sore. And like pretty much all gaming chairs, you can recline this chair back pretty much to the point where you're upside down in the case of this chair. You just pull the little lever on the right side and off you go. And you can do this. I'm basically upside down. I don't know why you would need to lean this far back. It's kind of a miracle that the chair hasn't flipped over. I mean, it's not even touching the ground, even though it probably looks like it does in the shot. But uh, I'm basically hanging upside down right now. I'm like a bat. I don't know why you would need to flip this far upside down unless you're trying to do like some teeter hangups type stuff and decompress your spine. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can do this. Help. I don't think I can get up. Another thing worth mentioning is the armrests. Now, a lot of times on these budget friendly chairs, the armrests really tend to be not that great. And Deer Hunter's armrests kind of fall right in between. Now, a lot of times on the more inexpensive ones, they tend to be just hard plastic and there's not a lot of options. Now, on Deer Hunters, they do have a nice concave shape to them, so your arm does rest naturally in them and it's fairly comfortable. They're also kind of squishy padding to them. Now, I wouldn't say that it's super soft or plush, uh, but it is better than having a hard plastic armrest. Now, as far as being able to articulate them, pretty much all you can do is move them up and move them down. They also don't slide super easily, but obviously they're gonna lock into place. They've got a couple different stops there, so you can find a pretty good position for them. And you can also bring out the width as well, but you do have to unscrew it underneath the chair. As is the case with pretty much every gaming chair I've reviewed, they pretty much all come with a pair of pillows. And the Deer Hunter obviously is no exception here. You do get the head and neck pillow. It kind of goes over the top. It's got the little elastic strap, and this one actually has a little buckle as well. And you also get the lumbar pillow with a pair of straps here that runs through the top and kind of comes through the bottom. Now, I'm not really a huge fan of the method of having to use the straps to secure it to the chair because they're kind of uncomfortable if they rub against your back and they typically don't stay in place very well. And I've said in pretty much every chair that I've reviewed that I find the lumbar pillows to be pretty much useless. And that's pretty much the case here with the Deer Hunter one as well. It's also very narrow. Normally they're a little bit wider. And I do like that this one isn't as deep because a lot of times they push out your back way too much and it's just really uncomfortable. Uh, but again, with the head pillow, a lot of times I actually will use these because it is kind of comfortable to rest your head back. And if you play like I do, where you kind of lean back in your seat a lot of the times while you're playing, it is nice to have something there to kind of support your head. But uh, the Deer Hunter, again, like the lumbar pillow, it's a very small head and neck pillow. And also, it actually has a little zipper here to look at the padding inside. And mine, for one, doesn't even have the tab for the zipper. That's just not even on there. It looks like it broke off. Uh, but if you open the thing up, it's pretty much just uh, some cotton padding in there. Um, looks like something you'd find like in a like a dollar teddy bear somewhere. So really not the best quality. It's not going to be memory foam or something like that. It does get the job done. I mean, after all, we're just sitting there gaming and, and a lot of times coming from a normal office chair, you're not going to have a pillow behind your head. So something's better than nothing there, uh, but just keep that in mind. Looking at the underside of the chair now, one thing I really wanted to point out to you guys is that the base of the chair here that the casters sit on is all plastic. So uh, it, while it is a really thick and sturdy plastic, I could see that maybe bowing some over time. It's not nearly as premium as having like a, a whole metal kind of steel base for the chair. Uh, the casters as well are pretty much primarily plastic. They don't really feel that premium at all. And if you're on carpet or something like that, I don't really see it being that big of an issue because you're not going to be rolling around anyways. But on a hardwood floor or tile or something like that, I mean, they may break on you or, you know, might not necessarily roll all that great. Um, also, the piston on the chair really only has about two inches or so of movement. And so if you wanted to really have a lot of dynamic range in positioning this chair exactly how you want it or you have a higher desk, may not really be that great of an option for you. So overall, to kind of circle back to my initial question at the beginning of the video, is this chair worth it compared to some of the more premium options out there? 
it is a good option i would say for you know younger kids or let's say young adults uh, pretty much, you know, maybe teenagers and below would be great because it's a smaller size. They're not re gonna require as much cushion. It does have a lot of great color options. And also you don't have to worry about it costing a ton of money if it's gonna get kind of beat up uh, and stuff like that. You don't, you don't wanna necessarily spend 400 bucks on an ultra premium chair with premium upholstery if it's gonna get spilled on and stuff like that. Uh, also, you know, for a budget friendly chair, it's not bad but it does get dangerously close to some of the other chairs out there that I've done reviews of on this channel that come between, let's say, $200, $250, uh, something like maybe Opseat or Tesoro's chair as well, do have a little bit more premium feel in the $200 to $250 range. So if you can save up another 30 to 40 bucks, might not be a bad idea to at least take a look at those. But if you, know, you really aren't comfortable going above 169, 179 bucks, this may not be a bad option for you, especially if you can find it on sale on Amazon. Well, that's it for the video, guys. Let me know in those comments down below what you think about this chair. Do you think that it is worth the price and it's a good budget-friendly option? Or would you personally save up and go for something that is a little bit more high-end? Of course, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like to show your support. And if you're new here, I'd love to see you subscribe because I've got a lot more videos coming for you in the near future. Of course, you can always follow me on Twitter at BrainBean Gaming to stay up to date with what's going on with the channel. But as always, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.